In this series, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to strip away all the complexity and hard graft and teach you how to cook amazing food standing on your head. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. From the kitchen novice to the budding chef, I'm going to give you the confidence, the recipes, and the insider knowledge to make you a much better cook. Slice round, wasting nothing. I made my name cooking in some of the world's most demanding kitchens. Uh, That's nice. You make it look the Belmont Zip before service. Yeah. In my restaurants, I expect perfection. Every plate has to be worthy of a Michelin star. And every time you make them, you yeah. taste it as well. Yeah, yeah. Every day it changes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you some simple and accessible recipes for fantastic food that you can cook easily at home. Mm. Incredible. I'll be holding you by the hand. It's getting better and better and better. Teaching you everything from how to cook on a budget to baking, real fast food, and my ultimate feast recipes. This is the only cookery course you'll ever need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, this is my guide to cooking with spice. Adding big, gutsy flavors using spices at the beginning of cooking and then simply letting the dish slow cook is a brilliant way of getting maximum flavor with minimum effort. My first recipe melts in the mouth. And because the oven does most of the work, it's a cinch to make. Slow cooked, fiery lamb. Cooking is all about being bold and adventurous. And this dish is exciting because it's slowly cooked. And the longer it cooks, the more flavorsome it becomes. Marinating the lamb first. Chilies, we're going to use a mixture of red and green. Take off the tops and just slice in. Garlic, crushed. Don't worry about chopping these ultra fine. Just Get it in there. Cooking for up to three hours, everything sort of blends and almost sort of purees itself together. Smoked paprika. Goes brilliantly well with the chilies. Two teaspoons in. A touch of dried oregano. Some little cumin seeds. The blend and the fragrance that they give out is extraordinary. They release a little oil as well and helps to tenderize the lamb. Touch of salt. Pepper, cinnamon. That sort of sweetens up the lamb. Olive oil, just a tablespoon. And the olive oil helps to sort of stick all those wonderful spices to the lamb. Jump in, just start really rubbing. At this stage, you can leave the lamb to marinate for anything from half an hour to overnight. Allowing the spices to really penetrate the meat, giving amazing results when you tuck in. Delicious. Vegetables. Carrots and onions. And that's it. Sliced. Secret of slicing vegetables for braising is not getting too thin. You slice the onions too thin, they burn. You've got that horrible char taste on that slow braised. Braising is just a chef's term that means cooking in liquid on a low heat, making the meat incredibly moist and beautifully tender. So the secret of braising is having a really nice, thick, durable pan. Get that nice and hot. Just a touch of olive oil. Lamb in, hold the bone, because you're in control then, into the pan. I want that white fat to start rendering so it'll add more fat, therefore making it a lot more flavoursome as it braises. Chilies, cinnamon in, mix that up. And don't be scared, you're not burning this, you're sort of searing the lamb shanks, and this is the important part right at the very beginning. We're getting a colour on the lamb, which washes off as it braises in the oven, so be generous with that colour. Vegetables in. Wow. And then a couple of bay leaves. So now you lift the lamb up and get the lamb sat on top of the vegetables. Now, you glaze the pan with red wine. Deglazing means that you're, you're cleaning the bottom of the pan and you're getting that amazing flavour washed off and lifted up into that sauce. It can really transform that dish. Always deglaze. Then bring to the boil and cook for about 10 minutes to reduce. The wine's reduced down by half. Now for the stock. Bring that stock back up to the boil and then into the oven. Now, don't cover it. When you cover it, all the condensation comes off the lid. Your lamb becomes grey. All this effort and that exciting spice gets washed away. No lid and into the oven for three hours.
A slow cook on a low heat of 160 degrees gives the spices time to work and transform the meat so it's mouth-wateringly tender. Now, look at those. Out on to a plate. You can just see that meat sliding down. Juicy and incredibly tender. Grab it by the, the shank, roll them around that rich, delicious sauce. Look at that. You can get your sauce. Nice. Beautiful. Just get some mint. Don't chop it. Just pick that fresh mint and let it snow. And there you go. A very spicy, delicious, melting in the mouth, lamb shank. Amazing. To get the most out of your spices, there's only one piece of kit that you need. Pestle and mortar. I mean, they look fantastic and it's essential for any good kitchen. These things are so versatile. These ancient kitchen tools are perfect for everything, from pestos to dressings, and cost from around 15 quid. Use to grind spices and you'll max out on flavour. Get perfect textures and always be totally in control. Make sure you've got a nice, large circumference of the bowl so you can grind away. The heavier and the more durable they are, the more confidence it gives you when you're pounding. And there's almost a way of confirming homemade hand pounded. Grab yourself a pestle and mortar and soon you'll be spicing with ease. Spices are a brilliant way to add an extra layer and a depth of complexity to any dish. Learning to use them properly will really improve your cooking. Here are three more of my super simple spice recipes to get you going. First up, a very easy chilli and spice white bait. Start with the spice coating. Toast Szechuan peppercorns and coriander seeds in a hot dry pan to release their flavours. Add chilli flakes and grind in a pestle and mortar to make a fiery fine powder. Combine with plain flour, season and mix. Add olive oil to a hot pan. Coat white bait in the spicy flour mix, then fry. White bait are an oily fish that are healthy, delicious and cook in minutes. Once golden, they're done. Fantastic with garlic mayonnaise or a simple squeeze of lemon. Ready in under 10 minutes, chilli and spice white bait, an easy, simple, spicy dish. My next amazingly aromatic recipe is roasted squash hummus. Start with my take on Raz Al Hanout, a classic Moroccan spice blend. In a dry pan, toast cinnamon, cloves, coriander, fenugreek and fennel seeds. Then add mustard seeds and cumin. When the seeds start to pop, they're ready. Add paprika and grind into a fine powder. For the hummus, Peel and chop butternut squash. Put on a baking tray and add garlic, simply bashed, and chopped ginger. Drizzle with olive oil, season, and sprinkle over the spice mix. Then roast in a hot oven for half an hour until soft. Allow to cool and place in a blender. Add tahini, a nutty paste made from sesame seeds. Cooked chickpeas, a dash of lemon juice and a drizzle of olive oil. Blitz until luxuriously creamy and textured. Spices toasted for maximum flavour. Amazing roasted squash hummus. My final deliciously spicy dish is curry spice sweet corn soup. First, the fragrant curry paste. Roast coriander and cumin seeds into aromatic. Then grind, adding crushed garlic, chilli powder, turmeric and finely chopped ginger. Bring together with olive oil to form a thick paste. For the soup, fry finely chopped onions in olive oil. Add the curry paste, 
and cook to release the flavours. Add cubed potatoes, chicken stock and season. When the potato has softened, stir in cream corn. Then add whole sweet corn kernels with some of the juices and transfer to a blender and blitz until smooth. For texture, add more whole sweet corn. Heat and it's ready to serve. Wonderfully satisfying curried spice sweet corn soup that packs an amazingly aromatic punch. Three more stunning recipes that make cooking with spice simple. Incredible. Coming up on my ultimate guide to cooking with spice, more fragrant tricks of the trade. Use the back of the knife and flatten it. That removes all those little seeds off the skin. All about shopping for spice. If you buy spices, buy them whole. And an incredible rice pudding to stake your life on. Look, it's like rich, aromatic lava bubbling away. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. This is my guide to cooking with spice. Next up, my shopping guide to buying spices. When I buy my spice, I only want the best, and it always pays to get expert advice. Birgit Erath has been selling every spice under the sun in London's Notting Hill for over 20 years, so she really knows what she's talking about. I love spices, the smell, the texture, the colour. Spices are so versatile. Something very, very simple can be really transformed into something really delicious. With thousands of aromatic ingredients on her shelves, if it smells good, she sells it. If you buy spices, buy them whole. Then you can try roast them, grind them when you need them, and then they will release the essential oils. Whole spices you can keep for years. Give them a good bushing <laughs> wine bottle with your rolling pin or whatever, and you see there is still aroma, and you can taste it, you smell it, then it's fine. There's four main spices. One is sweet, one is sour, one is bitter, and one is hot. This is cinnamon. And that is really a great example of a sweet spice. When you buy a cinnamon quill like this, you have to check that you have loads of different layers in here. Then you can either grind this or you'd break a piece off. I mean, this doesn't smell of anything now, but if you roll it in your hand, just quickly like this, and then you smell it again. This is just unbelievable. If you have spaghetti bolognese, put a pinch of cinnamon in it to bring out the flavor. Sumac, this is one of those really special spices. Sour, like a lemon, but it has a salty aftertaste. I use this anywhere from marinades to salad. You haven't lived unless you tried it. A great example for a bitter spice would actually be uh, turmeric. This is actually a root. It grows in the ground like ginger. Use it very, very sparingly. About that much will actually color you a curry or a rice dish, wonderful yellow. Watch your fingers, you get really yellow fingers from it. And then we come to the hot spices. One spice that I couldn't miss, and that is Hungarian paprika. Paprika is the powdery form of a bell pepper. What makes the Hungarian paprika different is that they actually grow it on vineyards. It's sort of between the vines. It has a, a sweetness and it has a sharpness to it. I have it in ice cream, I have it on fish, I have it everywhere. Birgit's spot on about the power of spices to transform dishes, whether savoury or sweet. Here's my quick guide to the spices I use most. Black pepper. This is the spice I couldn't do without. Always buy it whole and grind yourself so you get the freshest flavour. Cardamom. These pods come in green or black types and have a fantastic spicy sweet taste. Brilliant for everything from curries to rice dishes and puddings. Coriander. These citrusy seeds are perfect whole in pickles or grind to use in fragrant stews and soups. Cumin, a savoury spice that's pungent and nutty. It's great in marinades for delicious meat and fish. Then cinnamon, sweetly fragrant and great with apples or in cakes. And nutmeg, warm and spicy, it's delicious in a bechamel sauce. Finally, saffron. These sweet strands infuse a brilliant bright red colour 
and are great in risottos, and even though it's more expensive than gold, a pinch goes a long, long way. Store your spices properly, and they'll last for years. You keep it airtight in a tin or in a glass jar in your cupboard. Don't be scared of spices, like an aftershave or a perfume. You have to select it yourself. It has to fit in with your taste and with your kitchen. Supermarkets and good local shops sell an amazing array of different spices, so there's no excuse for not being adventurous. Be bold, find what you like, and spice up your cooking. Like all chefs, I love the challenge of transforming classic recipes, giving them a new twist to make them modern and vibrant. To keep old dishes fresh and exciting, it's great to get spicy. My next recipe is a time-honored British classic, but with the addition of spices, it's given a new lease of life, fragrant spice rice pudding. I love cooking with spices, but you don't have to just cook savoury dishes. Using aromatics and spices across desserts takes your puddings to a completely different level. First off, our spices. This is a fresh vanilla pod, fragrant and packed full of flavour. Use the back of the knife and flatten it. That removes all those little seeds off the skin of the vanilla pod. Take your knife, slice down the middle. And then when you open that up, the smell is incredible. Take the tip of the knife and you scrape inside. And look, all those seeds dying to come out. That is incredible. There are thousands of seeds still ingrained to the pod, so put them in to the casserole. Cardamom, powerful, spicy. Take two little pods, place your knife on top, and lightly crack them. Cracking the cardamom pods helps release all the amazing flavour. Cloves, gives it that kind of aniseed flavour with a lot of depth. One, two, three. Cinnamon stick, snap and in. Just smelling that level of fragrance, you can imagine what the rice pudding is going to taste of. Turn on the heat, lightly toast those spices just a couple of seconds. And what's going to happen is just going to sort of enhance those spices in a way that it just draws out an even more powerful fragrance. Coconut milk in. Sugar. Two tablespoons. Milk. And then a couple of tablespoons of cream. Bring it slowly to the boil to allow the flavours to infuse. And this rice pudding reminds me of my time in India, where I got really into that chai tea fragrance because it was just so delicious and so comforting. Take a lime in. The lime just cuts through the richness of the coconut, gives it that nice little bit of acidity. Goes fantastically well with the cinnamon and that fresh vanilla. Nice. Have a taste. Mm. Now, let's come up to the boil. Give it a nice little clean round the outside and in with the rice. Use 200 grams of pudding rice. Don't wash it beforehand because the starch helps thicken the rice pudding in the oven. And just turn that down to a light simmer. And the pudding rice starts to open up and it absorbs all that coconut, vanilla, cardamom, clove, and cinnamon. Bring it up to the ball gently and cook it out for three to five minutes. Boiling it rapidly, the rice opens up and it goes into mush. So we want to keep that nice texture of that sort of fragrant rice pudding on a gentle simmer. Next, a little luxury. I'm going to show you how I take this simple, delicious, aromatic rice pudding to a completely different level. Here's what I do. Take two egg yolks, separate them. Now give that a really nice whisk. Two nice tablespoons of mascarpone cheese. Whisk that into the egg yolks. Just as nice and smooth. It's almost like finishing the rice pudding in a delicious custard. Turn off the gas, add that into the rice pudding. And what happens, it starts to enrich and really thicken this rice pudding and takes it to a completely different level. The rice is still not cooked, but started to go nice and soft. You can just see how it's opening up. But look, it's like rich, aromatic lava bubbling away. Finally, Grate more citrus zest. The lime on top. Roasted, caramelised 
lime zest on top of a rice pudding is phenomenal. Then put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 200 degrees to finish cooking the rice and develop the intensely aromatic flavours. Look at that. An incredibly fragrant rice pudding. How beautiful does that look? Spices are a brilliant way of helping classic dishes come alive. I'll guarantee you'll never, ever have had a rice pudding like this before. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First, how to zest a lemon. The important part is not to zest any of the pith. Watch the following technique and I'll show you how. We've got all these original graters. Really important when we use this, we use the, the fine zester. Not the big rough one, not the one for slicing, and not the other one for grating. This little one here. Onto a plate, because it's always easier to lift off from the plate than it is the board. And the most important thing about zesting a lemon is nice long strokes, but twisting the lemon round. Every time we go down, we twist. Same with the orange and same with the lime. Little tap. If you go too far, let me just show you. Look, you've got that white, bitter pith that destroys the wonderful, zesty flavour. And look, that's what we're looking for there. This really nice, vibrant lemon zest. Delicious. Garlic is a key ingredient in so many spicy dishes. My tip for finely chopping and mincing is to add a pinch of salt for abrasion, which helps break the fibres of the garlic down for a much better result. For getting the most out of root ginger, simply remove the skin using a teaspoon. It's easier than using a knife, and you can get around the tricky bits. Or just keep the skin on and give it a good wash. Never throw out vanilla pods. There's a ton of flavour left in the skin. Stick inside jars of sugar and leave to infuse. Great to sprinkle on cakes, biscuits or porridge. When grinding up spices, if you have any left over, you can store it in an airtight jar for up to two months. Great for a spicy kick to have at your fingertips. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. To collect selected recipes from the show, go to my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Gordon. Go on, get cooking. Next time, my ultimate food on a budget. How to make the most of your ingredients. Get that pan really nice and hot because this is a cheap cut. Great money saving kitchen tips. This is where you get so much more bang for your buck out of sausages. And more incredible and cheap dishes to stake your life on. And uh, that is a perfect way of taking a cheap cut into the Premier League of dishes. Might take that one. It's a long time till payday. St Albans and the surrounding Hertfordshire area. Kirsty and Phil will be in you for a new series of Location, Location, Location tonight at 8. The next, come dine with me.